look at that beautiful MT-07. Mm, mm, mm. Even with the stock exhaust, sounds good, boy. It sounds good. Just stock. I have had this bike for, let's see, two weeks? One week. Oh shit, I can't even remember. One week. Yeah. One week, one day. Or has it been two weeks? Son of a bitch, I'm getting old. Anyway, man, I love this bike. I love it, love it, love it. This is not a beginner's bike. And when I say that, I mean it can be. But that's not what this is made for. This is not geared to be a be uh, beginner's bike. I love this bike. And as you can see, V-Strom 1000. KLR 650. Bam. And of course, I've ridden for well over 20 years. So I am not a beginner. I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. But definitely not a beginner. And I still love this bike. Power on. Power on, this says. So you gotta get that island music playlist. You gotta get that island music playlist with Elephant, Ellie Mac, Common Kings. Let's start off with some Common Kings. Common Kings, pray. Oh, that's good. That's good. Mmm, love Common Kings. All right, now that we got the soundtrack right, now we go. Now we go. Put the phone in the GV tank bag. Is it GV or Givy? We're gonna go with GV. You know, I had to have some storage on this bike. That's really the only thing that this bike lacks is proper storage. And I need at least something for when I go through the gate uh, where I work. I have to go through a gate. I have to show my ID and boom. Let's pull it out. Boom, boom. Good to go. All right, let's see what our engine temp is, y'all. 124 so I don't really like to take off on anything really even my vehicles without being at the proper engine temp and for this bike right around 172 is the uh, warm is considered warmed up the fan kicks on at about 220 and the reason I know that is because when I'm waiting in line in the mornings at the gate to show my ID uh, you know it's stop and go and waiting for a long time and the fan kicks on at around 220 so just FYI, in case you were wondering, and off we go. And until she's good and warmed up, you know you don't want to, you don't want to race the engine. You don't want to get them RPMs up too high until it's warmed up. So let's let her get warmed up to about 170-ish. All right, we're gonna go. We're clear, clear for takeoff. We are clear for takeoff. Until we get up to the correct temperature, that is. Ooh, speaking of temperature, it is uh, brisk here in middle Georgia today on December, what is it, December 18th. About a week out from Christmas. And it is uh, nipply. Let's see what our air temperature is. 54. I know some of y'all in the north, y'all like, ah, that's warm. But here in the south, that's cold. Let me just tell you. Don't get it twisted. Here in the middle of Georgia, anything below like 70, that's cold to us. So, all right, all right. Yeah, we're about 156 on the engine temperature. For those of y'all that's wondering about break-in on this bike, I'm still in the break-in period. I've got about, I don't know, I think I'm up around almost 370 miles, 400 miles, something like that. I put on this bike so far in a week or a week and a half. How long I've had it. The owner's manual says during break-in period, during the first 600 miles that you ride it, that you shouldn't go above 5,000 RPM for prolonged periods of time. Now, as you can see, I'm in sixth gear, barely at 4,000 RPM. I'm already doing almost 60. And I'll tell you, uh, 5,000 RPM in sixth gear on this bike is about 71 miles an hour. So, 
you can even during break-in you still roll pretty fast on this bike however you know there's different schools of thought on break-in some people follow the owner's manual some people ride it hard I just ride it like I would normally ride it I don't ride it hard I don't necessarily follow the manual to a T I kind of try I'm, I'm cognizant of it I keep it in the back of my head but I don't follow it to a T the cool thing about this bike though um, you know a lot of bikes are real cumbersome during break-in they say the owner's manual says don't exceed this rpm no matter what do not exceed it well on this bike it's different it says don't exceed 5,000 rpm for for prolonged periods of time which means they're telling you hey man it's cool if you go above 5,000 just don't stay there for you know a half an hour cruising at a higher rpm than that so that's pretty cool and that's the first 600 miles now from 600 to a thousand it's 6,000 rpm that they don't want you to exceed for prolonged periods of time so don't worry about break-in and the bike not being fun if you're trying to follow the break-in exactly by the manual because it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine 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 you're gonna have fun on this bike even during the break-in so don't even sweat it man this bike is just so zippy man I guess I could use all the buzzwords that other people use on their videos when they're talking about the MT-07 you always hear the word torquey uh, torque through the rev range well I mean they're not lying they're not wrong it's all that I'm trying to stay away from those words I'll just tell you it's fast it's a quick it's a very quick bike I think I've had it up to like 92 and I wasn't even I wasn't trying I wasn't doing like a speed run or anything I just happened to look down I was going through the gears and I glanced down for a second and boom I was at 92 I was like, oh shit so uh, it gets to that speed very fast you get to 70 80 90 miles an hour in no time i mean it's it's a quick quick bike is it a fast bike i don't know i haven't had it long enough it's still being broke in i'm not trying to see how fast it can go but if you want a bike that's quick like i ride this bike to work and i'm gonna tell you what that torque it comes in so handy when i'm shooting gaps going to work and what i mean by shooting gaps is i'll see these idiots in front of me they're playing on their phones you know they're kind of weaving they're going slower than the speed limit i know they're distracted either by a phone or by food or by makeup putting on their makeup whatever the case may be these fools are distracted and i don't know about y'all but for me i'd rather have them way behind me I don't want to have to deal with them. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be behind them because I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Man, I'm telling you, you drop a gear, you twist that throttle, and it, you're, it's like you're on a rocket, man. And uh, you don't need much room in between cars to shoot the, shoot the gap, if y'all know what I'm talking about when I say shoot the gap. That's something we all can use in our daily commutes, our daily riding, wherever we ride. No matter if it's these country roads or out in the city, that torque is going to be way more usable to you than fast speed up high in the rev range going straight for you know going in a straight line at 170 miles an hour like how is that going to be useful to you i mean yeah it's cool that you can do it but what's going to be way more useful to you is what this bike does which is go very fast it's very quick it goes very fast up to whatever point you need it to get to and i think that's what everybody is trying to tell you folks on these videos these mt mt07 review videos that's what everybody's trying to say they're trying to tell you hey man this probably isn't the fastest bike on the planet when going in a straight line you're probably going to get your uh <laughs> probably going to get your brakes blown off by you know a leader bike however going through the uh going through the gears on this bike is just quick man look at that man i mean golly oh my goodness see next thing you know you're you're at 70 miles an hour man you barely golly and that's why i love this bike and i've ridden a bunch of bikes over the course of my riding history which is well over 20 years i started riding my early 20s i'm in my late 40s now that's right i'm old and uh this ranks right up there with uh, you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and say this is the funnest bike funnest funnest it's 
that a word, funnest? I think I should say most fun. This is the most fun bike that I've ever owned. And the other two bikes in my garage, the V-Strom 1000 and the KLR 650, they have their purpose. The KLR 650, when I want to go th through the woods, um, you know, go go have fun uh, on some off-road stuff, I jump on the KLR. When I want to go take a trip from where I'm at here in middle Georgia and go up to Tennessee or go visit my son in Mississippi, well, guess what? I jump on the uh, V-Strom. Got a nice big windshield on there, got a nice comfortable seat. Lots of luggage, great for touring. Now, when I want to run, jump on the bike and go for a quick ride, guess what I'm going to choose? I'm going to choose this MT-07 every time. Which is unfortunate for my V-Strom and my KLR because, um, man, I think they, they might get a little neglected. I'm going to have to give them some love every now and then, but this is the bike that I'm probably going to choose for my everyday riding when I go to work. Uh, if I want to just jump on and, and get a quick ride in like I am today. That's what this bike is great for, man. You just want to clear your head. You know, you're stressing about something. You're stressing about something at work. You're stressing about something in your relationship. You're stressing about whatever. And you're like, man, I need to get out on the road. I need to jump on the bike, clear my head, get a ride in. Man, this is the bike I want to choose every time. Because it's just so easy, man. It's just, it's, it's a small bike. And you can just jump on it and go. I love it. All these reviewers on YouTube that get these NT07s, that's what they're trying to tell you. They're trying to tell you it's a, it's a quick, quick bike. That's easy to ride, man. It's a small little bike. Hell, when I first got on it, it felt like, uh, felt like a little 250 that I used to have, a little GW250 that I had back in the day. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, oh, golly. Well, I tell you what, you twist that throttle and you are gone on this bike. What's up, I-75? Man, I tell you, this bike, man, y'all are gonna love it. Y'all are going to love it. And it's pretty cheap. I mean, considering everything else that's out there, MSRP for this bike was uh, $78.99. And I paid every penny of that. Oh. Oh, look how fast I catch up to this truck. Oh my goodness gracious. A couple things I gotta get used to on this bike, though. For as much as I love it, there's some things that I got to get used to, right? No windshield, no windscreen, and I'm used to a windscreen. Both my KLR and my V-Strom have a windscreen. Not a big deal, just something I got to get used to. I got to get used to the wind, no big deal. That's why we buy motorcycles, right? To be out in the wind. Then the blinker switch and the horn switch and their relationship when it comes to proximity to one another. For whatever reason, my dumb behind keeps hitting the horn when I go to activate the blinkers or cancel the blinkers. On my KLR and my V-Strom and any, every other bike that I can remember, the blinker or the horn switch is well below the blinker switch. And for whatever reason, I never had an issue with it. But this one is just above the blinker switch and to the right. And for whatever reason, y'all, I don't know why, but when I go to activate the blinker or cancel the blinker, oftentimes I will hit that horn button. And I look like a big jackass honking the horn people looking at me like why are you honking the horn and i'm like oh sorry so that's kind of weird i gotta get used to that nothing against the bike it's just something that i need to get used to because i'm just not used to it another thing i gotta get used to is how how my legs are bent so my legs are bent at i don't know when i'm cruising on this bike my legs are at about about a 45 degree angle and what I'm used to on my KLR and my V-Strom is about a 90 degree bend. It's like I'm sitting in a chair when I'm on those other two bikes. On this bike, not so much. It's got a, I guess a sportier, I don't know. I don't know whatever you want to call it, but the, when I'm on this bike, my leg running at about a 45 degree bend. It's just something I got to get used to, the bend, the increased bend in my leg. I'm an old guy, like I said earlier, and my knees aren't in the best of shape. 26 years in the military takes its toll on your knees so that's what I'm working with so it's just something else I got to get used to I'm just not you know back in the day when I had a ZX6R and I was doing track days man, that stuff didn't bother me but I was young I was in my 20s 
I was bulletproof, but that bend in my legs did not bother me when I was young. And I had my sport bikes, and man, I was just tearing it up. But now, after being old, working on the flight line for 26 years, man, my legs, my knees, it's not what they used to be, man. And uh, I do feel it. I'm not going to lie to you. I do feel it when I'm on this bike. I find myself doing this a lot, just kicking my leg out and popping my knee um, again not the fault of the bike this is something I got to get used to being an old dude riding an MT-07 now let's talk about beginner versus experienced who needs to own this bike can a beginner ride this bike absolutely can a guy who's been riding well over 20 years like me ride this bike absolutely you're still gonna have fun either way you're still gonna have fun I would caution new riders if you're gonna buy this bike I would just caution you man you gotta you gotta man you gotta take it easy this bike will throw you back it's got so much torque it will definitely throw you back so uh, if you're a new rider and you're thinking about getting this bike by all means go right ahead but just be advised uh, this bike's got some power now it's nothing to be played around with you gonna have to ease into it but it's a bike that uh, you, I don't think you'll ever outgrow. So man, if you're a beginner and you want this bike, man, go get it. If you've been riding forever and you want this bike, go get it. You're gonna have fun. I promise you, you're gonna have fun. This is a fun little bike. And at the end of the day, that's what we get motorcycles for, right? Is to have fun. At the end of the day, that's the whole reason we do this, because it's fun. It doesn't matter your experience level I would just say if you're a beginner and you've never ridden before this is this is gonna be a handful for you if if you accidentally if you whiskey throttle this thing you're gonna crash so so just ease into it man be careful um, this is not the bike to be uh, whiskey throttling on you accidentally crank on that throttle and didn't mean to you're coming off <laughs> I mean I'm just keeping it real so Everybody who's out there saying, oh, the MT-07, that's a, that's a newbie bike. That's a beginner bike. Mm, nope. I disagree. I respectfully disagree. I would venture to say that people saying that might not have ever ridden this bike. Because if you ride this bike, you will see when you grab a hold of this throttle, boy, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to it's gonna throw you back, man. You got to be ready for it. Man, what a beautiful middle Georgia day, right? Golly, it is a perfect day to go riding, man. It's like 55, 54 degrees. It's bright and sunny. Look how pretty it is out here. Come on, man. Can't beat this. Heck yeah, man. Now, I am taking it easy, y'all, because I recently... Well, I say recently. It was in October. I rode my V-Strom from middle Georgia. I rode that bad boy all the way up to the tail of the dragon and I rode the tail of the dragon and I'd be damned if I didn't get a speeding ticket while I was up there I hadn't even gotten on the dragon yet I was just going if you ever been there I was coming from the Tennessee side there's a big lake on your right hand side before you you know get really to the turns and I'd be damned if there wasn't a Blount County Sheriff sitting there up under a tree and I had no idea what the speed limit was like I genuinely didn't know so I didn't even slow down man I just went right by him like I actually waved to him as I went by I wasn't trying to be a dick but like I genuinely didn't know the speed limit and I just cruised right on by him on my V-Strong well he pulled right out behind me and pulled my behind over and proceeded to get me a speeding ticket so I am uh, I am taking it easy I have been taking it easy ever since then I just, uh, I don't have, man, I, I, <laughs> I got enough stress in my life, man. I don't need to be getting speeding tickets, worried about insurance. I will say, though, that uh, that deputy up in Blount County, he was uh, really cool. He could have, he could have hammered me, man, and he could have, he could have really ruined my day, but he, uh, he wrote, he wrote the ticket as a county ordinance violation versus a state speeding violation, and um, that made a huge difference for me with regard to how much the ticket cost me and insurance you know he could have uh, he could have been way harder on me than what he was he was just uh, uh, he was just out there trying to keep people safe I guess the day before a couple of people had had to be medevaced out of there uh, off of the road there uh, the dragon so 
I mean, I get it, man. I, I, I understand. And I just kind of chalked it up as, uh, I mean, the ticket was so nominal. I mean, after he knocked it down to an ordinance, the, the cost of the ticket was, I just chalked it up as uh, my entrance fee to the Dragon. And uh, I still had fun, man. I mean, I, like I said, I didn't have this bike at that time. So I did it on my V-Strom, which was still fun as hell. Highly recommend it if you hadn't been up there yet. I would highly recommend it. Try to go in October where the, the fall colors are really out in full bloom. Man, it's awesome. But yeah, man, I didn't have this bike. I wish I had this MT-07 when I went up there. Man, that would have been a blast. But I'm going to be honest with y'all, man. My whole riding uh, career, I guess, I have never been a fan of naked bikes. They just have never appealed to me. I've never been drawn to naked bike. And uh, I was at the dealer getting my rear tire changed, getting a new tire put on the rear of my V-Strom right before my trip to Tennessee. And while they were putting that tire on, I was like, well, shit, I'll go cruise around the showroom floor and see what's up. And they had this bike. And I was like, man, I don't really like naked bikes, but this bike looks pretty cool, man. I like the, the headlight configuration, you know, kind of looks like a wasp. Um, just really neat looking bike and then I sat on it I sat on it and man I knew I knew it was over because I sat on it and I was like holy mackerel this bike is so light it feels like I'm back on my 250 I mean and and just the seating position you're kind of upright so it's kind of comfortable um, other than you know my leg bend which I got to get used to but man I got on it and I was like holy Moses why do I like this bike? I don't like naked bikes. Why am I falling in love with this bike? Why do I feel like this bike is talking to me? So I hem hawed around and thought about it. And then I started watching videos on the MT-07. And about a week later, there my dumb ass was buying another bike. Like I needed another bike. Terrible financial decision. But I don't, I can't really put my finger on exactly what it was or what it is about this bike. Again, this is a guy, me, who normally does not care for naked bikes. But I'm telling y'all, this, this bike is different, man. It's just hard to explain, but I, I don't think, honestly, man, if y'all get this bike, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I really don't, man. I mean, you're getting Yamaha reliability with the CP2 689cc motor. It's the same exact motor that's in the R7, T7. Um, so, I mean, Yamaha's using it in several other bikes. Uh, you know, I've never had one before, so I can't personally speak to the reliability of the motor, but just do some research and you'll find that this motor has a reputation for being bulletproof. So you're getting that CP2 motor. Um, you're getting a lot, man. You're getting a lot of stuff for a price tag of $78.99. Come on, man. Now, I will say, I walked out the door, this is full disclosure, full transparency, I walked out the door at 10-3, because here in middle Georgia, they have this lovely thing called an ad valorem tax, where on top of all the other taxes that you're paying, they put, charge an ad valorem tax that is a percentage of the value of the bike or car that you're buying. So, I paid, I think it was almost $700 just, just for the ad valorem tax alone. And we hadn't even got to the stupid dock fees and the stupid dealer prep and the stupid uh, freight. So you're not going to get. I, you'd be hard pressed, I think. Now I'm not a I'm not a bike buying expert, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find any dealer that's not going to charge you a freight fee, a dock fee, and a dealer prep fee. Now they have the latitude in Georgia anyway to charge whatever they want. I know in, in some states the dock fee and some of those dealer fees are capped. Here in Georgia they can charge you whatever they want. And uh, I actually, the dealer that I sat on the MT-07, they wouldn't budge off of their dock fees. And that was really my only negotiating tool, I think. I negotiated on the dealer fees. And uh, the first dealer, the one where I sat on the bike, man, they were they were kind of they were kind of being dicks, man. They were uh, they didn't want to budge off anything. And when I said 
well I'm gonna go to another dealer and see what they can do with regard to coming off their you know see what their dock fees like literally the guy emailed me back he's like all right like he did not give a damn I was like oh okay well that's uh that's telling right there and I went to another dealer uh, about 30 40 minutes up the road no not even that much and uh, they're like hey man we just want to sell you a bike so we can we can we got some room on them dealer fees but shit y'all that room wasn't very much room but it was still less than the first dealer I went to they had the bike in stock I wanted it y'all know how it is when you want something you kind of you know your heart kind of takes over for your brain but and so I walked out at 10 3 and y'all probably I can hear the comments I see the comments now oh man you paid too much I got it for 8,000 even blah 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 well you know what great I'm not I don't have I have zero buyers remorse I paid what I paid it's December of 2022 um, these bikes are pretty popular they're hard to find I was surprised I found one I'm surprised two separate dealers each had one on the showroom floor so anyway man I paid I paid what I paid and I ain't I'm not even mad about it this bike puts so much joy into my heart <laughs> that sounds so cheesy man this bike puts smiles on my face man I, I don't even worry about what I paid man bottom line bottom line on this bike you're gonna have a whole bunch of fun for not a whole bunch of money when compared to other bike you're gonna love this bike if you're experienced if you're exp I would argue that if you're an experienced rider you're gonna love it even more than if you were a beginner rider because beginner riders they're gonna be hesitant they're gonna be a little um, a little gun shy they're still gonna love it but it's gonna take them a while to really love it if you're an experienced person you're gonna be able to jump on this bike and you're gonna have fun from from the jump man I'd recommend it for all throughout the range of experience level this is the bike for you now I'm sure there are people who tour on these bikes I don't know if that's what you want to use this bike for but for quick rides out in the country going to work and back especially going to work and back because this thing gets over 50 miles to the gallon and that's my real world tracking so far too so that's not just uh yamaha propaganda that's like my real world metrics so far on this bike is i'm averaging about 52 miles to the gallon um so and i've been flogging on it a little bit you know i don't i'm not easy on it like today i'm kind of going easy because i'm trying to make this stupid video that no one's gonna watch anyway it's just it's just got so many things going for it man and I've heard the complaints about the suspension man I'm just gonna be honest with you I'm not good enough to know if the suspension is good or bad seems fine to me <laughs> I'm not a MotoGP racer so uh, for me I mean it seems fine to me me just a regular dude I have no issues with the suspension whatsoever the seat some people complain that the seat's uncomfortable yeah I mean it's definitely not as comfortable as the seat on my KLR and my V-Strom but those bikes are you know they're made kind of for a different purpose um, you could probably buy a more comfortable seat I'm sure you could probably there's probably things you could do to this bike to make the seat more comfortable but I don't know I'm okay with it let's see what else do people complain about on all the videos that I watched uh some people complain about this plastic uh tank cover it, like these this right here is not metal it's plastic on both sides it's a two separate pieces this is a piece and that's a piece i'm gonna be honest with y'all i didn't even know it was plastic until i was coming across a video i think it was a i think it was cycle cruiser he was uh installing something on the bike and i saw him take off the side panel i was like and I had to come out and look at mine. I'm like, wait a minute. So I came out looking, I knocked, I'm like, well, damn, it is plastic. Um, and uh, that fella, um, Spite, used to be on Yami New, kind of broke away, did his own thing now. He was complaining about that. And I'm like, that's kind of a weird thing to complain about <laughs> because, I mean, do you sit there, do you ride around constantly looking at your tank and saying, hey, that's not metal. Oh my God, that's not metal. And you're like focused on your tank. No, I don't. So it's kind of a, it's a very weird thing to complain about for me. 
I look at it as a good thing. You drop the bike, and instead of buying a whole new damn gas tank, you're only buying a plastic cover that costs like 50, 60 bucks versus a gas tank that costs like 500 bucks. So why someone would complain about that is weird to me, but you know, everybody's got their, everybody's got their pet peeves and their things that they like and dislike and want to complain about. Um, me, I'm not complaining about it. I kind of think it's a good idea kind of saves you in case you lay the bike down and even us I say us even experienced dudes you know I mean shit happens sometimes I almost dropped my v-strom one day in my garage because my wife had just pulled out it was in the summertime my wife had pulled out of the garage she had her air conditioner on there was some water on the garage floor and my garage floor is slick as snot whenever it's wet and I just came home I pulled in the garage and I put my foot down my damn foot slipped and I damn near it is a miracle I didn't drop my bike drop my v-strom because my v-strom's a heavy bastard um but somehow I kept it up point being even even if you've been riding your entire life like since you was two you can still lay a bike over man and if you got these plastic fairings over t over your gas tank um you're gonna spend a lot less money making the bike look like new again. So, I don't know, if you wanna complain about a plastic gas tank cover that looks metal, I mean, again, I had to come out and check because I didn't even know it looked metal to me. It's nice, shiny, I mean, it feels sturdy. So, it's a weird thing to complain about. What else, what else do people complain about? Oh, I know what, it, I know, I read one article where, uh, this old girl, she was riding, and she was uh, complaining about where the key was. And she said, if you have any kind of key tag or keychain, it's going to beat the hell out of your out of your uh, front fairing or the headlight. Um, well, do, does it look like my key my key tag is beating the hell out of the fairing? It's not even moving. Look, look. <laughs> what the hell is she talking about? So here you go. There's proof I'm doing almost 70 miles an hour the key tag is not freaking moving so no your key tag or keychain is not going to beat the hell out of the front of the bike now I will agree it is an odd place to have a key I've never had a bike where the key is uh, beyond the instrument cluster but hey oh you know what that reminds me the instrument cluster that's the one other thing I'm going to kind of not complain about but I'm going to tell you I need to get used to it the instrument cluster on my other bikes, the instrument clusters are higher, so when I'm riding, I just got to glance down very quickly and I get all the information I need. On this bike, I can't glance down because when I glance down, I don't see the instrument cluster. I see the nose piece of my helmet. So to see the information on this instrument cluster, I literally, I, I have to move my whole head down a little bit to see. And that's kind of strange for me because I'm used to just glancing down and I can't do that anymore. I have to get used to kind of putting my head down a little bit to glance at the uh, instrument cluster. And, uh, and I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if other people have that problem, but not a big deal. Speaking of the instrument cluster, it's pretty cool, right? It's got that black background with white letters and numbers that kind of pop out at you. Um, very easy to read. ton of information. You can go through all your... Um, information with this switch this info switch right here you toggle through you know you got your temp engine temperature you got the outside temperature that's how many miles I got on a bike 379 that's my uh, trip trip one and that's what I use to calculate my gas mileage I'll reset that every time I fill up so it's I've gone 50 miles since the last time I filled up but anyway Y'all get the picture, you scroll through your, that's kind of a cool color. You scroll through your stuff with that switch right there. Uh, point being, everything's easy to read on this instrument cluster. You don't really have to kind of search. Um, it's just, everything's kind of right there and easy to, uh, easy to read. So I just wish the instrument cluster maybe was a little higher or something. I don't know. I just got to get used to that. Not a big deal. Well, I guess I have uh, flapped my gums enough. If anybody is still with me at this point, which I doubt, but if you are, thanks for hanging in there.